A ball moves along a frictionless surface at a constant velocity. It reaches a rough surface at point P and moves across that surface for a short distance before it reaches an upward slope at R. The upward slope has the same coefficient of kinetic friction as PR. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, well, obviously, at, between P and R, this ball is going to slow down. That means its velocity gets less. So we are either looking at that one or at that one over there. Then we are going to say, when we're going on this section over here, the velocity should get even less faster. So in other words, the deceleration is greater. How do we see that? We see that on a um, on the gradient of the graph. So over here, I slow down somewhat, and then I slow down more drastically. So D is your correct answer. Two objects are thrown vertically upward from the same point, and they reach the same height. The first object has a significantly larger mass than the second object. Air resistance can be ignored. Which statement best describes the initial velocity and the acceleration of the two objects? Well, they are in free fall, and mass makes absolutely no difference. So the acceleration, the displacement, the final velocity, the initial velocity, if you look at all the equations of motion, none of that depends on mass. So actually these two balls have been thrown up from the same point, they reach the same height, and therefore everything else about them must be the same. So we're looking at the initial velocity, they must have started with the same velocity and they certainly must have had the same acceleration. So velocity and acceleration are the same for both objects. Acceleration, this is pure bookwork, is defined as the rate of change of velocity. Which of the following lists contains two vector quantities and one scalar? Again, we're back to level one stuff where acceleration is a vector, momentum is a vector, um, time, mass is a scalar, time is a scalar, distance is a scalar, force is a vector, displacement is a vector, velocity is a vector, acceleration is a vector, and momentum is a vector. So the only one with two vectors and one scalar is going to be A. Two identical small metal spheres on insulated stands carry equal charges and are a distance d apart. Each sphere experiences an electrostatic force of magnitude f. They are now brought to half d. So I'm going to go f is equal to k q1 q2 over r squared. This is my starting force. That was initially. Now we've got a new situation. The new situation has the exact same two charges and they are now a half d apart. So this was a d, if you want, doesn't matter, half d, and I have to square all of that. So that becomes k q1 q2 over a quarter d squared. When I have a quarter in the denominator, it really means 4 in the numerator. d squared if you prefer. And therefore, what's going to happen is I can now say, but that was my original force. So my new force is 4 times the original force, d. Two identical conducting spheres, p and q, carry charges of 6 times 4 times 10 to the negative 9. Those are the two charges. The spheres are allowed to touch. And this is what happens. So firstly, let's look at how many electrons. We, the question clearly wants something about electrons. So this 6,4 over here really means that it's plus 4 electrons. Because if I divide it by 1,6, that's plus 4 electrons. This is minus 8 electrons over there. So if I have got plus 4 and minus 8, and I touch them together... I am going to, and divide it in half again, I am going to land up with minus 2 as a midpoint between those two. How many electrons were transferred to get from plus 4 to minus 2 or from minus 8 to minus 2 and it is 6 electrons altogether. Let's see what's happening. 
during contact sphere P, now P started off positive, so it must have to become negative, it must have gained 6 electrons. The energy unit measured by the electricity meter in your home, this is pure learning again, is in a kilowatt hour. A piece of resistance wire has got a resistance of 24 ohms. Gugu takes the wire and forms a circle. She then connects it into the circle as shown. So if she's made a circle with it, this part of the circle over here will have a resistance of 12 ohms. And this part of the circle over here will have a resistance of 12 ohms. So that's our two 12 ohms in parallel. 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over 12 plus 1 over 12, which is equal to 2 over 12. R parallel is therefore 12 divided by 2, which is 6 ohms. So what is the equivalent resistance of that system? It is going to be 6 ohms. When a lamp is connected to a 240 volt source, a certain power is dissipated. We are expected from our information sheet to know that power is equal to V squared over R. That's on the information sheet. We're looking at potential differences. We're looking at power. And it is the same lamp, so it must have the same resistance. Assume the resistance remains constant. Power dissipation will now be equal to. So what happened is that I have taken 240, I have got 280, which means I have one third of the original potential difference. So that's the first power. My new power is equal to one third of V squared divided by R. And that is equal to one ninth of V squared over R, which is really V squared over R divided by 9 which is the same as V squared over R is the original power. So it's power 1 divided by 9. Two objects are connected by a rope of negligible mass. They are pulled along a horizontal, frictionless surface, and they accelerate in the direction of motion. The force applied is F, and the masses are M and 3M respectively. What is the magnitude of the tension in the string and I found it easier to do this using real values. So what if we say this is 10 and this is 10 and we're accelerating at 3 just for want of something better to see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to, oh I don't know if it's 3, I need to work out what it is, don't I? Ha, because I've got a mass over there. So I have got a force is equal to yeah, let's go with that. The force is equal to um, mass, the total mass, which is 40, because it's 3m plus m, times by the acceleration of 3, so that's 120 newtons. Now, if I take a look specifically at the tension, remember that this was a frictionless surface, so I don't have to worry about friction. The only force acting on that 3m block is the tension, so tension is equal to 30 times the acceleration of the system, 90 newtons. So the magnitude of the tension with respect to the applied force is this number over here is 3 quarters of 120, so it is 3 quarters of the original force.